Hello dear friends, I am Daisy Victoria and today I'm going to share my latest 1860s dress project. I grew up reenacting the 1860s and the American Civil War with my family and since I was planning to do a living history at Fort Clinch this spring with my dad, I decided to update my wardrobe. The event ended up getting cancelled so this will debut at a future living history event, hopefully come fall, if things work out schedule wise and if events are happening again, if not I suppose it will be later. The bulk of this video will focus on making the apron, followed by some information on the dress itself. I've also created a PDF pattern drafting and sewing tutorial for the apron, so if you're interested in that PDF, please find the link in the description below. I will also share an extended version of this video with my patrons on Patreon. I'm using a cotton muslin fabric for the apron. I like the off-white unbleached muslin personally, so I chose that one. I drafted the apron myself according to the diagram shared in the PDF. I started sewing it together by creating the upper chest piece, which I have lined here so that I could easily hide my machine stitches. I clipped the corners and turned it right side out. Then I gathered the lower edge using a very long stitch setting on my machine. It's recommended to use two rows of gathering stitches. I only used one row because I like to live on the edge. I made sure both sides were even and then tied off my threads when I was satisfied with my gathers. For the waistband, I am using double my fabric width. To make sure the seam is not in the center front, I cut one of the widths in half, thus transferring the seam location to two seams on either side of the large center piece. The main skirt part of the apron was hemmed by turning three of the edges under twice, making sure to create nice pretty corners. I hemmed this by hand because I like to avoid visible machine stitches on my period clothing, especially for living history events. I gathered the top of the skirt portion the same way I gathered the chest piece, once again living on the edge with that single row of gathering stitches. Both of these were then attached to the waistband, the chest piece at the top, 
and the skirt piece at the bottom. Then I attached the backing or lining side of the waistband and sewed that together. I was able to sew the long ends by machine and then turn them right side out before hand sewing the portion where the chest and skirt pieces are attached. To prepare the pockets, I folded over all of the edges, making sure to create nice pretty corners like I did for the larger piece. I made sure the upper edge of each pocket was hemmed and then decided where I liked them. I like to put them where I can reach with my hands, you know, since that's how pockets work. I stitched the pockets onto the skirt by hand once again to make sure only hand stitches are visible.
And here's the apron laid out. The dress itself is made with a plaid cotton homespun with lining of the same cotton muslin I used for the apron. The skirt is cartridge pleated made with rectangular construction. I also added pockets. I love using plaid fabrics for cartridge pleating because I can use the plaid to gauge my stitch length. Cartridge pleating or gauging is a hand sewing technique requiring the skirt to be gathered up prior to attaching the waistband, also by hand. This method of gathering is found in the period and allows a very large amount of fabric to be gathered into a very small final width, making it perfect for very full skirts. I did not film the making of the bodice, though I do have more detailed construction photos on my Patreon. Here I'm showing you the inside so you can see a bit of the finishing. The bodice buttons in front and at the sleeve cuffs. I did sew the buttonholes by machine because I thought they seemed to disappear very well into the plaid pattern. The lining is fitted while the outer layer of fabric is looser with fashionable gathers at the waistline. I also created a sunbonnet. I used a really basic silhouette, essentially a large semicircle. The sun is a fickle friend, and I wanted to make sure I'm protected. And here's the finished outfit. I already had the collar, so no need to make a new one. This is what many reenactors would call a work dress, or a sort of daytime dress made for the purpose of getting some work done. Since I function as a field nurse as well as support for my dad's unit, the dress is intended to facilitate me going about those supportive and nurse-like tasks. The apron pins onto the bodice, as seen in the period, and ties in the back. I find this apron style to be very practical and versatile. I participate in reenactment and living history as a field nurse and a vivandier, and this apron is very easy to work in.
This is my final fitting. I'm wearing a chemise, drawers or pantaloons, and a corset. Please note, I did not put on a petticoat for this fitting. The bodice and skirt are left separate so that I can interchange them with other bodices and skirts. Specifically, I wanted to be able to wear this bodice with my Vivandier skirt. One of my ideas for entertaining myself and you during quarantine is to play dress up in this outfit and feature more information on wearing the ensemble, so please stay tuned whenever I get around to that. I was also hoping to do a vlog of the Living History event featuring this dress as well as my Vivandier uniform and my beloved Fort Clinch. I don't know when that will happen now, so hopefully the upcoming dress up feature will hold us over for a while. I suspect I'm the one who needs the most holding over. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to my channel and consider supporting me on Patreon if you'd like extra goodies, including an extended version of this video. I also have PDF tutorials to help you create your dream costumes, and you can find me on the social medias. I look forward to seeing you again very soon.